Welcome back to another lesson. As you can tell by the title, we're discussing arbitrage betting in this video and section of the course. I want to clearly define arbitrage betting and the differences between, you know, some of the other related terms uh, that we may have heard, like, you know, hedging, middling, scalping. So we'll talk about what they are, uh, why and when to use these different types of betting techniques. Uh, but first, let's just go ahead and define exactly what arbitrage betting is. Uh, arbitrage betting or arb betting in simple terms is just placing bets on all possible outcomes of an event in order to guarantee a profit. You know, sounds pretty good, right? Um, now, arb betting has similarities to uh, hedging or middling, but the main difference is the purpose of how we use them, or I guess the intention. Um, you know, that's what separates them, and I'm going to show you uh, throughout some of these uh, examples here. Now, the only way arbitrage betting opportunities are even possible is you know when sports books have different opinions on the outcome of a game or event uh, for the most part sports books are aligned pretty closely with the same price or spread so it's not like there's a ton of arbitrage opportunities available it's you know really tough to find them uh, because with arbitrage betting you're basically taking advantage of the difference uh, of odds at different sports books you know sometimes sports books will adjust their odds based on the action at their book in order to kind of balance out uh, their risk or exposure. And this, you know, can result in a difference in odds from book to book. Also, you know, there's times when a key player uh, news breaks or, um, you know, like a starting quarterback gets ruled out and the sports books will kind of scramble to adjust the price. Um, the problem with this is a lot of books will just kind of remove the game completely and pull it off the board so we can't bet it, um, you know, until they feel like they have a correct, uh, you know, strong adjusted line. But a lot of times when they do repost the game and make it available for betting, uh, there will be some big difference in pricing. Uh, like, for example, the one I have on the screen here, uh, the Colts starting quarterback Carson Wentz was announced he would not be starting and the backup Sam Ellinger would start instead. Uh, this type of news, uh, of course, resulted in a big change in the odds. And anytime there's, you know, uncertainty on the game, uh, this can provide opportunities for arbitrage betting. Uh, so if we look here at the example on the screen, there's a pretty big price difference uh, between the two books. And this would be considered a, you know, a very good size arbitrage opportunity. And uh, you won't be able to just find these types of price differences, um, you know, often. Uh, but how you exploit it is uh, pretty simple. Um, if you bet the Colts minus 140 at my bookie um, and then you bet the Raiders plus 160, at Fox bet, no matter the outcome, you have a risk free, um, you know, opportunity. You know, if you risk 140 to win 100 on the Colts and then you risk 100 to win 160 on the Raiders, you'd break even if the Colts win, but you'd win $20 if the Raiders win. Uh, in the rare event of a tie, um, no money exchanges because it'd be a push. Uh, and the original bet amounts would just be returned. But the idea behind a true arbitrage bet is to guarantee profit, uh, no matter the outcome. Uh, in this example, you only win if the underdog Raiders win, but by doing some simple math, you can kind of guarantee a profit by changing the risk amount. Uh, so now let's say you risk $92 on the Raiders at plus 160 odds. That would pay out roughly 147 And then let's say you risk 140 to win 100 on the Colts at minus 140 odds. So Colts win, you'd collect 100 and pay the 92 That would equal an $8 profit. Uh, and if the Raiders were to win, you'd collect the 147, but you'd have to pay out the Colts loss of 140, but it would give you a profit of $7. And of course, a tie, no money exchanges. Now, this would be a true arbitrage bet. No matter the outcome, you profit. You know, the only outcome that would result in no money, again, would be the tie. But uh, now a couple things. Uh, some of you might be thinking $7 is not a lot, but we're talking about a risk-free $7, which again, the example I used is rare. Um, you're not going to find these type of uh, differences every day. Uh, and also the more money you stake or, you know, you put up or risk, uh, the bigger the profit. You know, that's $7 profit on a total stake of $232. The 92 you risked on the Raiders, the 140 on the Colts, so that equals 232. Um, that's the total amount staked or you, the, the money you put up. Now, keep that in mind. A total stake of $232 resulted in a guaranteed profit of $7. Now, we can figure out our arbitrage profit uh, pretty easily by choosing um, a total stake number. But uh, in order to do that, we need to do a little math. And don't worry, though. Um, I hate math, so uh, this will be simple math, you know. And um, I know as a sports better, hating math is like, you know, uh, 
a chef hating knives or some shit. But um, the math side of sports betting for me is really just kind of like a necessary evil. Um, and with Arbing, you'll uh, definitely want to know how to calculate your profit and the amount to risk on each side uh, to obtain that profit. And I'll show you, um, you know, exactly how to do that here. Now, the first step, we need to turn the odds of the two arbitrage bets into decimal odds. Now, on the betting network's odds cheat sheet, which we should all have saved by now, it's in the betting tools channel, um, we can use it to convert the money lines into decimal odds. So uh, sticking with the same example here, minus 140 of the Colts, that converts to uh, decimal odds of 1.71, and then the plus 160 on the Raiders converts to 2.60 in decimal odds. Now, once we have the decimal odds, uh, it's really simple. We can just pick any amount we want to stake for the ARB opportunity. Um, we know putting up the $232 uh, resulted in a profit of $7. Let's see uh, what it'd be if we staked a total of $1,000 total. Um, so now stay with me here because, uh, we get into the math stuff here, but, uh, now let's say, um, it gets a little confusing, but just stay with me here. Uh, it's simple math, but if you follow along, um, you know, this is going to tell you exactly what you need to bet on each side, uh, to guarantee a profit. So all we do is divide that total stake of the 1000 by each set of the decimal odds we just converted. And this is going to give us the exact bet amount for each side of the arbitrage. So 1000. Uh, we're going to divide that by the 2.60 on the Raiders. Um, that's going to come out to 384. Um, then we go to the Colt side there, 1,000 divided by 1.71. That's going to be 584. So when we add 384 and 584 together, we get a total of 968. Our total profit uh, for this ARB is the difference between 968 and the number 1,000, which we uh, will be our total stake. So it's a difference of $32. That's going to be our total profit. So if we use these numbers on the arbitrage wager on the top right of the screen, we can see a risk of 584 on the Colts at minus 140 odds would pay 417. Um, 385 risk on the Raiders at plus 160 odds pays out 614. And again, no matter the outcome, it's a profit of roughly $32. Colts win. We collect 417. We pay out 385. That equals a profit of $32. Say if the Raiders win, we collect 614, but pay out the 584. That equals $30 in profit. Now, I know this sounds good before everyone just runs to start looking for arbitrage opportunities. I want to be clear that the example I used, you know, was a unique situation with the quarterback change. And that's why there was such a, you know, price difference. You can definitely find arbitrage spots, but before even heading out to start searching, you're going to want to prepare. Um, you'll need to have access to bet at a wide variety of books. Um, it does you no good if you find arbs um, on a book you can't even bet on. Um, I re recommend, you know, having a variety of, um, of all different types of uh, sports books, legal U.S. books, offshore books, uh, local uh, paperhead books. Uh, and there's a video lesson uh, in this course uh, discussing all the different types of sports books. Uh, and besides just having different types of sports books, you want to, um, you know, try looking at all different types of markets as well, like player props or alternate totals. Um, you'll have better luck. Uh, finding line differences on the smaller types of markets rather than just NFL sides or totals, which, um, you know, are pretty much all aligned for the most part. Um, you'll want to have the sports books accounts you do have funded with enough money to take advantage of our, uh, our opportunities uh, when they do come up because um, – you want to think of, you know, our betting in terms of ROI, return on investment. Uh, you know, if you spend five hours, you know, looking and finding an ARB um, and it only nets you five dollars, is that one dollar an hour really worth it? Um, you know, there's a bunch of different sites now that will compare the different prices at all the sports books and show you the ARB opportunities. But um you know, the downside to most of them is they cost money. And, you know, typically the price differences at the books, they're not going to last very long. People are jumping on them, you know, and the market corrects itself. So uh, if you have the time and are equipped with the tools, you can definitely make money arbitrage betting. But uh, to be honest, in order to really, you know, successfully are bet regularly, you almost need the help of, a, well, you, you know, you do need a help of a bot, to be honest. Um, uh, that's going to allow you to automate a lot of this stuff. Uh, the few people I know that successfully arbitrage bet, they use bots, they program them uh, to not just find the price differences at their sports books, but um, 
it'll bet it as well, you know, bet them instantly. So, uh, you know, they're really good with coding language and JavaScript and Python and stuff like that. So, uh, and they'll have API feeds set up at the different sports books and, you know, the bots bet these, um, ARB spots like in a split second, anytime a price difference pops up, you know, it's actually pretty impressive stuff, but, um, you know, our betting is just one technique too that, you know, there's some other interesting betting techniques we can use as well, like, you know, hedging and middling. Uh, and in the next lesson, we're going to dive into those. So I will see you on the next one for hedging.